Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And thanks for joining us for the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Radig, along with your City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mark Roloff. Mark, thanks for being here. Great to be here, Andy. Okay, well, we've got a lot coming up today. And in the first half of today's show, we'll talk about some municipal news updates, as usual. And then in the second half, we'll talk about some agenda highlights from the upcoming Tuesday, September 14th Common Council meeting. So, Mark, in the first part of the program today, we've got a lot of different things here. Uh, one thing that's kind of exciting is that we have a new director at the Oshkosh Public Museum. Yeah, I'm very excited to make this announcement. Uh, Sarah Phillips. Uh, will be joining us from the Idaho State Museum where she's been in the curating division and uh, has gradually moved her uh, way up through the ranks there and mm -hmm. she's been with the uh, Idaho State Museum since 2008 so we're really excited uh, that Sarah's going to be joining us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, she has a lot of background and, and uh, studied at Boise State University. Um, and I understand she starts in the de December. Yeah, she does. Uh, you mentioned Boise State. She uh, has a degree in history with an emphasis in American history and then a master's of applied historical research with museum studies. So she's very well qualified mm -hmm. for the position and certainly has some great experience uh, that uh, I think she'll be able to lend quite well to the museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you said she starts in December. She'll be uh, she's in the process of getting ready for for all the big moves and everything, and we'll be excited when she's able to join us. Sure, sure. And I'd be re remiss without saying that uh, we, we send our best out to Brad Larson uh, after 30, 30 plus years. 32 plus years. He's been, mm -hmm. He was with us since 1989. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad did a wonderful job of serving uh, the uh, community and the museum. Went through a lot. Remember the fire of 1994? Mm -hmm. Brad uh, lived to tell about that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and certainly brought the museum back from literally uh, ashes to uh, to what it is. It's a very vibrant public museum. It's a uh, it's great. Uh, and uh, Sarah saw that when she mm -hmm. applied for the position, and right. she's very excited about taking over the reins from from Brad. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, uh, we had some other good news uh, come across the desk from the uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, and they received straight A's from the DNR. That's great. They go through an annual compliance maintenance report. So okay. they're a little different than the public museum. We shifted gears we shifted. pretty well there. But you know, you don't always get to see the treatment plant, but you know, this is sort of a behind the scenes uh, look of what our treatment plant is. But there are so many levels. Uh, I believe uh, you know, there, there's a multitude of uh, standards that they have to reach and they received a grade of A in every one of those categories for the evaluation year for 2020. Mm -hmm. That's right, and that covers uh, a lot of different areas and um, just reinforces that, that the staff are committed to their, their work, they, they're excited about their work, and um, really a lot of great comments. Yeah, the reviewer from the Department of Natural Resources commented that there have been lower peak uh, flows coming into the treatment system, and a lot of that's not just because of what's done at the treatment plant, but what's done in the system. We've done a lot with uh, infiltration and inflow reduction, we call it I&I, &I, to reduce that so that has less uh, essentially clear water coming into the treatment plant. So when the, the sewage does come in, it's just sewage. It's not uh, water that's come in there mm -hmm. from other sources. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that avoids having to do something like bypass a uh, portion of the treatment process. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're able to treat uh, everything that comes in uh, and minimize that so that um, we're much more efficient by doing that. Right, right. Kind of an interesting inside look there of the, the water, uh, uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, it's quite complex and it's actually huge. I walked through it one time and I, I was surprised how huge it is. Yeah, it's an it's amazing process and we've got, you know, the, the qualifications of our people to do this. Uh, there are high standards that we have and our folks rise to the occasion to make sure that uh, the water we return to the Fox River is actually cleaner than the water we take out of Lake Winnebago. 
that's how good of a system we have. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of that. That's excellent. All right. Well, uh, I guess speaking of uh, uh, water infrastructure with the city, I understand that uh, uh, reimbursement remains available for uh, lead water service line replacements. Yeah, these are services that go from the curb stop, which is where the city system ends, goes into private property. Uh, but we uh, have some funds still from the DNR that are available, and we want to make sure, and that's for the private side, okay. uh, to replace lead services lines. Uh, completed during the 2021 construction season. So uh, we've been able to take advantage of that this year. But what this does is this program re, uh, reimburses eligible property owners on a uh, first requited, uh, completed request received, first reimbursed, first in, first out, mm -hmm. until the funding is fully utilized or expires. So we are still uh, offering that available to people. Um, projects that uh, they get pre-approved for this funding must have it completed no later than November 12th to receive reimbursement. So if you're interested, applications available on the city's website. Mm -hmm. We certainly want to encourage people to do that. Right. Uh, but to take a look at our website and look for uh, lead service line replacement and uh, we will take care of you. And uh, uh, we absolutely want you to uh, consider replacing these lines because uh, they can become a, uh, a hazard, especially for families with young children. Mm -hmm. And folks can also double check with city staff to determine whether their residence has a lead service line or, or not. So Yeah, there's ways to look at that. So mm -hmm. we, we want to encourage people to check it out and see. Uh, but generally, if you haven't had your service line replaced and you're over 50 years old, the chance of you having lead service line is pretty high. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, those lead service lines originate from the street, and there's a lot of street road construction going on around town. You're doing a nice job segueing into these different topics Well, today. I do what That's I can. Pretty, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a lot of projects going on here uh, throughout the community. But some of the big ones, of course, uh, the ones that uh, people uh, get inconvenienced the most on. And right. yes, it is construction season. It's not winter. Uh, mm -hmm. But West Ninth, uh, which is pretty much west of Oakwood Road. Vinton mm -hmm. Construction is starting grading work for the sidewalks and driveways. You see that some of the concrete's already down there. And we're going to be doing some more concrete pouring work. And the utility installation continues. So while it's still closed for the most part to through traffic except for uh, people who need to get there to get to their homes, mm -hmm. uh, it's still going on. CP, similar situation over there on CP Avenue. This is uh, Vinton Construction and then Aldix Concrete will fall up with sidewalk installation restoration. But there, uh, Vinton is finishing the mainline paving program and they're gonna start the sidewalk grading very soon as well. So you can see the progress is getting made uh, slow but surely. Uh, there's a difference between these two roads though and uh, one of the reasons that maybe uh, West Ninth is taking a little longer, West Ninth is being reconstructed completely to a width of 48 feet. Right. Uh, CP is only about 30 to 32 feet. So mm -hmm. huge, 50% bigger mm -hmm. uh, than other streets. So understand that that's why uh, if, if you're a little impatient out there on West Ninth, please understand that uh, it's a little bigger project. but. As I always say, we'll be done by deer hunting season, trust me. Right, right. And and considering also that West Ninth was a very narrow two lane road and now it's it's you know receiving sidewalks and, and everything else. Too. Yeah, I mean so. we added storm sewer, which we all we had previous were ditches from prior town. So yeah, yeah. a lot of big improvements out there. Right, and right. speaking of other big improvements, Fond du Lac Road is right. the other one that's really busy. Uh, concrete paving schedule for the interior lane, but uh, as a was reported by staff today, you can mm -hmm. drive through the construction zone if you need to. Mm -hmm. Mark's little tip of the day is stay on Oregon to Ripple and you'll just avoid the construction zone. That's just my little tip of the day. But if you need to get through to go to Parnell's or something like that, you can get through just fine. So we want to make sure that you're still uh, taking care of Oshkosh businesses. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, so you can still go north and south now. But um, things are following up. And again, we're on schedule with that. And then associated with that is a little bit of East Waukaw Avenue, the sanitary sewer construction is continuing to uh, progress. So we're real happy with the progress we're making. Uh, we are on schedule with everything, maybe even a little bit ahead. Just cross your fingers that I don't jinx us with that statement. But uh, by deer hunting, we'll all be taken care of. Okay, well, we're looking forward to that. 
All right, another project that is very visible in the city of Oshkosh is the water tower by 9th and Washburn, and it's being it's it's getting a paint job. Getting a full repaint. The last time it was done in 1997, there were some spot repairs done in 2004. Uh, the work being done, you got some various uh, miscellaneous metal repairs, uh, and making sure that we're current, c compliant with whatever the the current code is. Installation of a mixing system that keeps the water churning when when we aren't using it as much. Uh, blasting and cleaning the abrasive uh, with abrasive the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, paint goes on in multiple coats. Um, the only the final coat is going to be the uh, correct color. So okay. don't worry if you see some weird color there. Uh, it's only when we're doing the last. But and then spot dry interior paint repair. So we've got to do some interior painting as well. So mm -hmm. uh, that's part of it. So mm -hmm. um, it is not on schedule. Okay. So, uh, and we have to explain that. There's we, an interesting reason for there, that. There's a very interesting reason. Uh, the original schedule is to start this past spring and we were supposed to be done by mid-July. Mm -hmm. Then a little thing happened along the way and Scott Williams of our staff has some great video. See that little blob in the, uh, about the two o'clock of the, uh, the clock tower, or the, uh, the, uh, the, the tower water. itself. Those are red tail hawks and they are considered an endangered species and we had to shut down the operation until the red tail hawks did their annual summer vacation and then we could take over. So we got most of the metal work and repairs are completed. Um, so we're still working on it. Now we're projected to be completed by the end of October. So thanks to the red hawks or blame the red hawks depending if you love them or you, you don't love them. But We'll get it done, but uh, that's caused a little delay on this project. Okay, well, we'll keep our eyes on that and, and keep everyone informed where we're at. Okay, well, folks, if you're watching us today, you're watching us through a streaming platform or through um, YouTube or something like that, uh, Oshkosh Media, unfortunately, is experiencing an outage on the uh, Spectrum cable system right now. Yeah, unfortunately, some equipment has failed on the on, uh spectrum system so they're working to get that equipment uh, replaced uh, we still have a very vibrant uh, public education government channel mm -hmm. uh, we're one of the very few that have two of them because we have that much programming but mm -hmm. it's going to be off for a while uh, we will keep you posted on it there's an air message that you're going to see if you are using spectrum but there are still other devices and other things available so please get the word out because mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to be able to see it on gov tv to to know this so tell your friends who who you know have gov tv and maybe you're missing that but we got streaming devices galore right andy right absolutely uh streaming devices you can use a roku amazon fire tv or apple tv and and use the oshkosh media app um, the website, of course, uh, live streams are there, and any of the archive materials available on the, the YouTube uh, Oshkosh Media channel. So, and if you have AT&T UVerse, Channel 99 is where you'll find us there. So, plenty of opportunities, uh, just unfortunate that it's an outage on Spectrum and we're working to get that repaired. Okay, uh, another uh, uh, thing from the Oshkosh Police Department is that their Relay app is unfortunately no longer available. Relay was a service that we received for non-emergency calls. People could uh, use the Relay app to relay some things. And uh, the, the company is uh, transitioning out. I don't think it's necessarily going out of business, but uh, they discontinued the service. So uh, we're going to seek other platforms that we might be able to use uh, similar uh, that offer the same type of service. But um, if you've, you know, we've talked about Relay a lot, mm -hmm. it's no longer available. So we'll keep you posted on where we go to next. Sure, and I understand too that the uh, police department is working on finding a replacement for that and we'll, we'll pass along the information as soon as we we know more about what they have for a, a replacement. And also over at the police department they've completed their process for uh, CALEA uh, uh, accreditation. Yeah, CALEA is the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, a national accreditation. We're actually the only municipal law enforcement agency in Wisconsin that is nationally accredited. And That's great. Uh, what we just did was complete a culmination of a four-year process to show compliance with. There's 36 chapters and 459 individual standards required for CALEA compliance. And we're very, you know, very much uh, dedicated to that, and our officers are. Um, and we received some great positive feedback and are waiting for confirmation of being reaccredited. So congratulations for the police department for going through this process, subjecting themselves to this uh, and being committed to, uh, to 
to serve in the public this way. Okay, and we'll pass along that information once that uh, confirmation is received. All right, and then Mark, uh, finally, if you can give us an update about where we're at with COVID, I know that we have a, uh, a mask uh, a requirement for employees and visitors in city operated buildings uh, through October 1st at this point. Yeah, we're gonna continue that. That applies to vaccinated and unvaccinated. That's per the uh, CDC guidelines, so we're still doing that. So really this is more of a, an opportunity to encourage people to uh, go to wcvaccine.org. That's the county's website for vaccines for local COVID-19 vaccination information. Uh, there's also tests that you can still do. We encourage people to get tests if they think they've been exposed. And of course, Go Transit will give you free transportation to mm -hmm. these vaccination appointments. So check it out on the county's website. And uh, we certainly wanna keep encouraging people if they haven't gotten vaccinated yet to do so. Right, and keep an eye on uh, our social media as well, our Oshkosh Media uh, social media. We pass along any updates of uh, vaccination clinics and, and different things that are available there. So, okay, well, I think that's about the time that we have for the first half of our program today, Mark. And we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with some agenda highlights from the upcoming Tuesday, September 14th Common Council meeting. You're watching the City Manager's Report. driver and I always wear my seatbelt and so does everyone that rides with me. Hey, I'm Brad from Lacrosse and I never wear a seatbelt. Well, that's unfortunate for Brad because even a car crash at just 15 miles an hour <laughs> can feel like being hit by a 300 pound lineman. And to add insult to injury, you'll get a ticket for not wearing your seatbelt. So take it from a driver who always wears a seatbelt. Click it or ticket and let's achieve zero deaths on Wisconsin roads. Zero on Wisconsin, a vision we can all live with. And welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Reddig, along with your City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mark Roloff. Let's take a look at some agenda highlights from the upcoming September 14th Common Council meeting. The meeting will start off with a, with a closed session. I, I guess, Mark, if you can give us a little bit of uh, background about this. I, I, I see it relates to uh, Smith School. Yeah, well, you, you may recall that a few months ago we had a presentation from uh, a group that purchased the former Smith School and they want to redevelop it into an affordable housing complex. Uh, the council has a process by which um, they uh, enter into negotiations about what a development agreement might look like, like for some incentives for them to do this. Uh, and you can see the former Smith School there. Uh, they're going to completely renovate this thing. Uh, they're also seeking historic tax credits. So we're just going to talk about what parameters uh, for negotiation we might want to have with them. That'll come back at a public meeting, but they're actually just now submitting an application for a tax recommend financing district support. Um, so we're gonna start that process and uh, hopefully uh, get something going to get this redeveloped. I think uh, the plans they've shown uh, are really gonna be great for the neighborhood. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing this uh, uh, develop. Okay, we'll keep an eye on, on that as it progresses. Okay, and then the meeting will be called to order at 6 p.m. And, and again, it's at City Hall in person, but there's also an option for remote participation. The meeting will begin with a public hearing, and uh, this deals with some uh, public works projects, uh, asphalt overlay. Yeah, there aren't a lot of our streets that are asphalt, but we have an annual asphalt overlay program for those, for those that do. And this is o our Olson Avenue from Vinland to Zion, Anderson from Farming to, to just north of Olson, and then Zion from Olson uh, Avenue, about uh, 250 feet north. So anyway, that's what we do. We, we put in a, a what's called a cold mix asphalt to, um, to kind of seal the street uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't require any utility changes at this time. So this, this buys at least uh, a good eight years. And uh, we've seen this last as long as 20 years. So we're real pleased with this product and uh, basically make the uh, road surface a little smoother for, for people to drive. Okay, all right. And then in the consent agenda of the meeting, there's an item for uh, lighting poles and fixtures. And this is over at the Pioneer River Walk. We awarded a contract to get the Pioneer River Walk done. That's just east of uh, the Main Street Bridge going over to the uh, uh, 
uh, the train bridge over there uh, as Pioneer Drive makes a turn. So okay. this is the proposed Riverwalk Trail. One of the things we do to help speed up the process is we purchase the lighting fixtures, uh, get them on order so that when it's time to put them in, uh, we order it in advance so that the uh, the contractor has it available to to him to get it done. So uh, it's just something we've done. We we avoid uh, paying sales tax. We avoid a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it gets it done a lot quicker. And we certainly want to get the River Rock Trail uh, this next extension done as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking forward to. Okay, well, a lot to come over in that area. All right, and then there's an item uh, a little bit later for the Oshkosh Fire Department, and it looks like this is to enhance their uh, recruitment efforts. Recruiting is a very challenging uh, issue for us at this time, mm -hmm. both in police and fire. Uh, we uh, are working with several of the area technical colleges. In fact, we're going all the way over to the northwest side of the state, but there's also mm -hmm. a company called National Testing Network where they offer a national exam that people can take. And this actually helps improve our the net we cast yeah. to encourage people to consider working for the Oshkosh Fire Department. Uh, this enables us to evaluate these people. They still have to pass the physical uh, standards as well, but this enables us to maybe uh, find somebody who maybe hadn't been considering Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once they pass that test, they go through all this training that you're seeing on the video. We have a very robust training program, uh, very high standards, and the national testing network that we're using adheres to those same high standards. So we know that uh, people we're bringing in uh, are very qualified and will do a great job for us. Absolutely. It's great to have that high caliber of service available here in Oshkosh from our fire and, and police folks. So. All right, and then there's an item coming up a little bit later on the agenda relating to the uh, capital improve improvement plan. And uh, I know that the, uh, the borrowing conditions are very good right now, so does that connect up with that? There is some of this. You'll recall that back uh, during the summer we had a work session with the council and we talked about borrowing for the upcoming year. And the council actually approved uh, increasing the borrowing based on the rates that we're currently getting, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that our the metrics that we use to analyze our debt were actually very favorable. So we wanted to uh, we wanted to take advantage of that. So council has been going back and forth in terms of what projects get moved up the list. Mm -hmm. We actually had to push a lot of projects down the list into future years okay. um, because of that, and I mean a lot more than the four million that they added to the borrowing. So. Uh, we're going from 16 to 20 million, and so council is going to be considering which project should be added uh, to that. We've given them some options. Um, you know, a lot of people are also thinking about, well, what can we do with the American Rescue Plan Act, right. ARPA funds? Right. Uh, and certainly, we want to, you know, we want to make sure, as I say, keep our powder dry for for mm -hmm. that discussion. Um, but you know, at a certain point, we're going to have to commit those funds as well. So uh, council is going to take a look at the different funding options. One of the big things that are going on is we have our new parks administration field operations building, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to cost you know over five and a half million dollars. So we're actually going to borrow that in three separate phases. So question is, is maybe we borrow a little more up front because the, the rates are so favorable. Sure. Um, and then we know we got it borrowed. We got it in the bank ready to spend it when we, um, uh, when we let the bids out uh, early next year. So uh, that's part of it. Uh, so I think council is going to take a look and they may shuffle a couple things around, but it's really about which projects get moved up and which projects get pushed back. Um, but we're doing that. Mm -hmm. And there might be some opportunities there. Yeah. And then the very next item on the agenda deals with expansion of the capital improvement plan. So. You know, how is this related and um, how is it possible that this could be expanded? Well, it's interesting because our public works department uh, actually tracks our capital projects for up to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do it for a couple of reasons. One is some projects may move up or down the list in terms of priorities. Uh, we want to have projects available. If a project has to get pushed back for whatever reason, we want to be able to have a replacement project. Sure. Also, when we're applying for grants, it's almost a given that you have to have uh, a project identified in your capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. So public works logic that they shared with council 
and, and council endorsed was that why don't we uh, identify 10 years worth of public works projects okay. so that if a funding opportunity presents itself, we can say, yes, we do have it in our capital improvement plan. So uh, we're expanding the, the, our CIP, we call it, mm -hmm. uh, to include not just our 2022 to 2026 project, but we're going to 2027 all the way out to 2031. Uh, so I think it shows, and we've got it on our website where you can take a look at it, mm -hmm. but we want to demonstrate to people that we have our act together and we're actively looking for ways to um, make ourselves eligible for funding when it becomes available. Mm -hmm. Kind of like ARPA maybe, and we'll be talking about that in a minute here. Yeah, but. we will be, and, and but it's sometimes some specialty funding becomes available, and if we can demonstrate it's already been in our plan, they're much more likely to award us a grant for that purpose. So it's mm -hmm. a very strategic move, and I appreciate Public Works thinking about that. Okay, great. Great, great to be forward-looking. All right, and then there's also a, an item on the agenda for uh, utility box wraps. And uh, folks might have seen the, the buses around town with, with the wraps, and that's sort of what the concept is, is a wrap like that? Yeah, it's a, it's a wrap like that, but much less commercial, much more historically oriented. I want to give a shout out to the Business Improvement District. They're the ones that uh, suggested the idea. And so this is the boring utility box in the middle. Mm -hmm. And here are some photographs that show some great uh, icons in Oshkosh architectural history. You may notice some of them. The upper right is over by New Moon. Uh, and the lower left is the Grand Opera House. And we've got mm -hmm. some other ones there. But they're going to do a little homage to all mm -hmm. these great buildings of the past and they're going to take these photographs and create wraps for our utility boxes. It's a wonderful way to add some local history, a little, a little interest uh, to a rather boring type of thing that right. we have to have. The box, the utility boxes have to be there, right. so let's make them a little fun. So mm -hmm. I want to thank the Business Improvement District for that wonderful idea. So uh, we're going to be working with them to, as a pilot program with a few boxes in the immediate downtown area. And if it works out well, uh, you might see a few more of these around town. Sure. Well, it's kind of kind of neat to be able to take something that's so utilitarian and actually put some beauty into it. So wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and then we just mentioned talking about ARPA funding, American Rescue Plan Act, and if you might be able to, to give us an update on where we're at with that. Cer certainly. The council has been very interested in what uh, types of requests we've been having, and we had a discussion the other day, and so what I agreed uh, that we could do is provide them a summary of all the projects that we have. Um, we've done a, a tally of what we've received to date, uh, okay. and we have over $65 million in requests uh, but that includes about $50 million in city capital projects that, that could be funded. Again, okay. remember I talked about how we had projects that have been pushed down the list. It's not because they're not needed. They're very much needed, but we, we just don't have the funding for it. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to identify all that for council to give them a flavor of what's being asked for. Sure. And then ask them where, not specific projects, but what areas do you want to have prioritized? We have requests from uh, not various nonprofit agencies. Uh, we have requests for uh, dealing with issues as complex as homelessness. Uh, we have support to uh, businesses that may have been impacted, mm -hmm. housing support, uh, things of that nature. And then a lot of capital projects and a lot of uh, restoration of lost revenue. Uh, room tax is a classic example. Okay. The, the, the hotel businesses have still not restored themselves. We can't promote Oshkosh without the Convention and Visitors Bureau getting funded by their primary revenue source, which is room tax. So mm -hmm. those are all the things we want to do. So this is what we're looking at with the council. Uh, we're going to be sharing that information with them and, and then seek some direction from them about uh, where they want to prioritize. Real quickly, you said 65 million of requests have come in. And, and what has Oshkosh been allocated? Uh, Oshkosh has only been allocated $20 million. Okay, so, so there's some got, work to do. Yeah, th we got over three times more than we, uh, than we have. Okay, all right, very good. Well, I think we're out of time, uh, but thanks again for being here, Mark. Always a pleasure, Andy. Okay, very good. And again, that Common Council meeting is coming up this Tuesday, September 14th at 6 p.m. That's in person at City Hall. 
with the option for remote participation by the public. And you can watch that meeting live on Spectrum 10 if it's restored, but otherwise you can watch it on UVerse 99, on streaming on YouTube and oshkoshmedia.org, as well as on streaming devices included, including Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. Just search for the Oshkosh Media app. Uh, thanks again for joining us today, and join us again in two weeks for another City Manager's Report. We'll see you next time.